I argue that the relationships housewives have with their husbands is sex work adjacent and should be treated as such. Testing, testing. All right, let's pack just a little bit, just so I can get the ears in there. Okay, so. Oop. Let's see when I put it back on. With the knees, I don't think it's easy. But I can crop them out, I can crop them out. Hey, and welcome, Anna. Welcome back to my channel. Feel free to look around as I carve out a new sector of space for the baddies that are down for radical imagination and not oppressive societies. My name is Donna Cabra and I'm here continuing on the series of City Girls Are Radical. So this video is specifically talking about how society creates false differences between housewives and sex workers. Um, I was thinking about how I kind of like ride the line of being like a sex worker, but someone who like is constantly being put on this pedestal of like wifey material and stuff like that. So I'm just like, how can I be both in a society that is supposed to be pitting these women against each other? So when looking through a patriarchal lens, there are clear examples, patterns, and expectations that both housewives and hoes share and are expected to come with, are, are expected to do, um, most things that housewives are expected to do, hoes are too. Um, so just a peek into history will let you know that real housewives are sex workers too. I like that. Y'all like that? Oh, y'all like that? Ooh. <laughs> okay. When we think of sex workers, it is usually with disgust, judgment, and shame. Prostitute, escort, or stripper are some pretty common titles, but the easier, more well-known term is hoe or whore. I would say sex work is inarguably the oldest profession to exist since human beings have been able to interact with another. Sex work has always existed. A lot of people like to have relationships with other people. That's just human nature. So whether any sexual activity is happening or not, people like to have relationships. And sexual happenings don't have to happen in those relationships shout out to my asexual hotties but as long as people have been able to fuck sex work has been a thing that has existed so of course there's going to be some radical imagination that happens so i want you to think of all the different types of relationships that you have in your life some relationships are romantic some are not some are family whether chosen or biological some are friends, some co-workers, and hopefully at least one of the relationships you thought of is the most important one, the one with yourself. Hey. These relationships took time to cultivate, and if they are still active, they continue to take effort, communication, and changes. Like I said earlier, not all of these relationships will include sex, but the relationships that do include sex still include effort, communication, life changes, and time. Now, despite what Jay-Z says about Black people and capitalism... These lies that America told us our whole life, um, and then when we start getting it, they try to lock us out of it. They start inventing words like, you know, capitalists and, you know, things like that. We actually invest in our futures a lot, like every day, with our time. The Bureau of Labor captured some interesting statistics in 2021. Here are the statistics. So, the average American works nine hours every workday, sleeps an average of eight hours, and spends an average of five and a half hours socializing. So, whether with a spouse, friends, or folks online, people are socializing with others and keeping up with those relationships by sharing time. Okay, so when it comes to time, I feel like when we think of time, we only think of it in a clock sense. We only think of it in a watch. You know, what time is it? Like, do I have time for that? But time is something that is a little bit more flexible and tangible. So some people sell their time and other people are willing to pay for that time. Yes, 
all sex workers sell their time in one way or another. But I argue that most people sell their time by working jobs or selling labor. You sell your time in one way or another. The concept of selling your time is something that we all should understand. When you go to a job, you are selling your time. And the white man that is paying you a little over minimum wage is buying your time. Or maybe Glorilla is giving you $550 a week. I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, you are willing to sell your time for a price, even if you wish the price was higher. Everybody selling their time, honey. Okay. But don't we all pay a price for all the relationships we have in our lives? Whether an emotional price, mental price, or financial price, relationships encourage interactions that can be fulfilling and abundant, even outside of monetary value. This goes for family, friends, lovers, co-workers, service providers, and of course, the relationship you have with yourself. Some relationships are lopsided, unfulfilling and toxic, which creates space for abusive experiences and um, an unfulfilled life. A majority of people may not even realize they are paying such a heavy toll within their relationships. And with that being said, relationships are not as free as we would like to think. I argue, I argue, I argue that the relationships housewives have with their husbands is sex work adjacent and should be treated as such. A regular woman is married to her husband and she wants him to buy her a washer and dryer set. In order for him to buy that, I'm sure she'd have to go to bed with him anyway to give him what he wants for her to get what she wants. So, in the long run, it all ends up the same way. Now, before diving into too much, let's talk about the basics of why we are here. First, this is from the lens of patriarchal dating concepts and expectations. I should add that the influence of capitalism and heteronormativity takes great effect as well. Yes, bland, I know. While I will jazz it up with queerness as being the solution later on, the stench of cis heteronormative guidelines shows up in all types of relationships, whether straight or queer. Even non-sexual and platonic relationships have a guideline that is influenced by heteronormative ideals, but we'll get there a little later. Also, I am very Black. So I'm going to have that understanding of my experience and culture born from living in the South as a queer young Black woman who dates Black people. Now that the church announcements have been made, let's talk about housewives. Come on, angles. The concept of being wifed up has been the same for our current times as it has been for centuries, where women are clamoring in an unspoken competition to get chosen and placed on the pedestal of housewife. This is a reminder that I am a Black woman who dates Black people of the diaspora that have direct lineage to those that were in bondage during chattel slavery. So when doing research, this is the lens in which I am looking through. So with that being said, Black housewives rarely exist because of the fact that Black women have always, always, always been in the workplace. Always. Black women have always worked. Um, Black women have always been in the workforce. Black women have always contributed to the good of the household, especially financially. Like, that's just a thing. So it was difficult for me to find visual references to represent Black housewives because of the extremely small number of Black women that are truly housewives to the core. Because let's remember, the purpose of housewife-ism is to be taken care of by your spouse. You're supposed to be taken care of by your husband. That's what makes someone a housewife. So you're to be taking care of your spouse while you, as the housewife, take care of the home and all that comes with the home. So a major note to make is that the housewife is not to be in the workforce. This is a huge emphasis. The purpose is to make sure the home runs like a business where all errands and home needs are handled, cleaning, lawn, yard work, repairs, paying the bills, etc. 
And this doesn't even include the children and child rearing, which is a career within itself. So the wife can either hire out and get support of running the home, or she would be responsible for doing it all by herself. Or she would have to gather the kids and train them to do housework. I do want it to be understood that most wives in the West are not housewives, Black, white, Asian, or Latina. They are working women that happen to be married. It is also necessary to remind ourselves that being a wife was something that had to be done in order to survive. Women were not allowed to have bank accounts until the 1960s. That was 50 years ago. I'm pretty sure you know a woman older than 50 years old. That's crazy. That's crazy. 50 years is right there. 50 years is right there. Okay? This was a legal matter. Women could not legally have bank accounts. Women were not encouraged to drive. Women could not vote. And women could not report intermarriage R word. Things like having a bank account or legally reporting sexual assault from your husband are fairly new things that women can access. So with that being said, I am grateful to my ancestral and elder matriarchs for doing the best they can with what they got. I'll do the best I can with what I got. Oh. I also want to give thanks to be able to have the privilege to choose whether or not I want to be married or have children because our foremothers literally could not. And this isn't even touching on child slavery. The YV versus Ho trope has been a juicy true crime special ingredient and has often been the easy way to blame hoes for infidelity. Harlot, homewrecker are some familiar terms. The idea of home wrecking usually looks like a married couple that includes a wife and husband. If the wife is betrayed by her partner when he steps outside of their monogamy agreements, then we think about the mistress has broken up a happy home or a home wrecker that slithers in and joyfully goes after the married man to ruin the institution of marriage. This is just like a scapegoat, by the way. It's usually the men that are going after the women and pretending that they're not married or that their marriage isn't happy or some stupid shit like that. Anyways, this concept can be seen and understood throughout most, if not all, monogamous relationships, not just marriage. It can be seen in boyfriend, girlfriend relationships, baby mama, baby daddy relationships. Though the concept of wife and hoe remain the same, there has been a nuanced character concept that has arrived within the last 30 to 40 years. The baby mama. Now, while baby mamas have always existed, the stigma and connotation that comes with the phrase baby mama encapsulates things that are usually that aren't usually positive. Lots of misogynoir. We, we understand that. Like, we're like, oh, baby, his baby mama. We understand. Or like, don't be a baby mama. Like, we understand what that connotation means and how it's not a positive one. While this video is not directly discussing the disrespect and huge burden that unmarried mothers get, I feel like it's important to acknowledge the fact that there is this weird caveat for women that dance on the line of being respected by society if and only if your baby daddy respects you. Because if not, society will blame the baby mama for all woes she experiences. She will be blamed for choosing the wrong guy to have a child with instead of us as a society agreeing that people should be responsible for their children. There is a negative stigma around being an unmarried woman with a child or children. Even if the woman becomes married in the future, no pun intended, she can still be berated and disrespected based on who she is a baby mama for. Ooh. Okay, let's talk about sex work. According to Wikipedia, a sex worker is a worker who provides sex work either on a regular or occasion basis. This term is used in reference to those who work in all areas of sex work. According to one view, sex work is different from sexual exploitation or the forcing of a person to commit sexual acts. Sex work is voluntary and consensual. This is important to note. Sex work is voluntary and consensual and is seen as a commercial exchange of sex for money or goods. If a sexual act is coercive or exploitative, then that is rape and not considered ethical sex work. Ethical sex work centers consent and choice. Ethical sex work centers consent and choice, period. And I'm using Wikipedia because it's like usually the first thing that pops up. So continuing on, sex work can take form of prostitution, stripping, or lap dancing, performance in pornography, phone or internet sex, or any of the other exchange of sexual services for financial or material gain. 
The variety in the tasks encompassed by sex work leads to a large range both in severity of nature and in risk that sex workers face in their occupation. He sits on the chair in his room and I walk over to him and I knee him first with my knee. And then after that, he tells me to go in the bathroom and get, you know, take my clothes off. He likes me to wear uh, bikinis, pink or white bikinis. I'll come out the bathroom once again. I walk into him with my knee, knee him in his balls, and I take my stilettos. I have these shoes with these kind of heels that he has me wear when I come see him, and I take the heel and I knee him in his balls with this, and then he gets on his knees and sucks on the bottom of my heel, licks the bottom of my heel <laughs> off, and he comes like that. Sex workers can act independently as individuals, work for a company or corporation, or work as part of a brothel. All of the above can be undertaken either by free choice or by coercion, or as some argue, along a continuum between conflict and agency. And there definitely is a continuum in the spectrum when it comes to sex work. I feel like these definitions are very modern and ignore the long history of sex work that can be traced back to the empires of Japan, Egypt, and Greece. Moving along. Okay. My definition of sex work is someone that has found a niche of sexual desire or desires and acquires material things through these desires. They can also be acquisitions of invisible things like quality time, favors, gifts, and much more. Most sex workers want cold hard cash though. I'm just saying. I also believe sex work can include work that is not always physical or in person. Sex work can be visual only mental only, completely verbal, or even limited in, in interactions at all. Sex work does not have to include reproductive organs at all. Um, there is an array of things that people can find sexy, so it is what floats your boat, baby. What floats your boat. Find what floats the boat and let the boat float. Some people argue that sex work takes away the agency from the worker since they're at the mercy of their payer. I used to think that sex work was work done strictly for survival purposes and had to exclusively include penetrative sex. Both of those statements do not have to be the case. I realized that sex work still involves relationships and boundaries if done with care and consensual intentions. That's not always the case, but that's not always the case in most of the relationships that exist. Relationships between humans are interesting and nuanced on their own without sex. So throwing sexiness in the mix wouldn't be any different, but it is possible. Come on, consent. Come on, consent. Come on, speaking. Come on, using our words and asking for, you know, negotiating and figuring out what it is that we want. Come on. So a note that I want to add is sex work isn't exactly liberating because work is work and working isn't always fun no matter what you do. Also, the ideas surrounding the sex work that I'm referring to is through the lens of a society that thinks, Sex is dirty and taboo. Look at it, look what they did to Megan Thee Stallion when sex was exposed. I argue that sex work is regular work and everyday people engage in sex work adjacent things. For example, if a man finds you attractive and he wants to pursue you, he might ask to pay your phone bill in order to get your number. If you agree to the proposal that he makes, does so that make you a sex worker? I don't know, but it makes him a trick, which makes you closer to sex work than you think. Come on, tricks. What a trick say. What a trick say. What a trick say. What a trick say. This is the tip of the iceberg, and there have been so many concepts introduced in this video. Let's take a deep breath. Even if you don't need a breather, I do. Please like the video, rewatch it, and leave a comment below to further the conversation. Please, honestly. It is a lot to digest that our intimate relationships are more nuanced and transactional than we have been taught. We have gone through the basic understanding of what a wife is supposed to be, what hoes are, sexual relationship dynamics, material things, and the historical ideas of sex work. I will continue to do more research to further this conversation. There will be a part two to this where I discuss how wives are in a boat that is oddly shaped just like the boat sex workers are in. Interesting. Yeah. Also, how society promotes sex work in an unsafe and stereotyped way. I will possibly do a part three 
When I talk about how sex work normalizes bartering and trading concepts outside of traditional money. Therefore, sex work challenges financial institutions as we know it and creating a consent-based environment, which leads us closer to freedom. I love when anarchy shows up in regular conversations. More reading and loving in my future. I hope this sparked a new idea or conversation for you and those around you. Sex is not dirty and marriage is not hell on earth. At least it shouldn't be. <laughs> Multiple things can be true at the same time and growth comes when we challenge norms. Yes, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Please like the video. Please rewatch the video. Please share the video. Please comment on the video. The interactions definitely help me now that I'm currently not monetized. And I honestly just really want the engagement to further this conversation. I feel like this is like a fairly new concept and it would be fun to see what other people thought about this. But yes, Real Housewives, if you were a Real Housewife, trust me, Real Housewives are sex workers too.